All right, here we are back on the Fuse Show. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode two. Yes, we've made a mark. Yes, another one. Episode one was very exciting. I had a really great time. We got a really uh, a lot of good feedback. A lot of good feedback on uh, what we did there. So here we are back for second episode, and here we are going to talk about. Um, Quite a few things, but remember the theme of the show is our local Miami wrestling and beyond. Because of course, we do like some other wrestling promotions that are not only located here in the Miami area, but also regular wrestling, like uh, WWE. Of course, who doesn't like WWE? So uh, we're going to be talking about a few things here. Um, going to go over the logo of the few. Okay. Uh, with I've had a lot of questions on. Oh, I see you guys got a really cool logo going on, but what's all that stuff on the bottom? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down so you guys have a little bit of history on the logo itself. And uh, we have an interactive question, a very interesting one. So we're gonna see what our um, our uh, people on the few page put down. And uh, we have a special guest today. Our guest today is gonna be J Dog. Yeah, we got J Dog here live. He's in the few room right now. He's being pampered. He asked for uh, I think it was a green uh, M and M's. Yeah, green, green, the special yeah. green M and M's and 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 bottled water like that ten dollar one. So you know the few had to go ahead and splurge a little bit. But as long as he's happy and he comes on, we're gonna be good to go. So twenty four seven Lou. Oh, twenty four seven Lou here to my right. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, having another another episode here of the few where everybody can enjoy. And I mean, they see the Facebook page, right? But yeah. now they see the people, the man behind it. What do we call you now? Well, uh, I've been asked, uh, you know, uh, from a lot of people. Oh, so so who are you for the few? What do you do for the few? What's what's your title? So we're just keeping it simple as uh, I'm the captain. The captain, the yes, captain, captain Bogey. Yes. So uh, captain of, of the few. Uh, that might as well bring us into our first segment here, kind of breaking down the few. And actually, you have the logo, if you can throw that up okay. whenever you have a moment. We're going to go uh, over the few logo. Well, when we uh, first started go, uh, back in July 18th of 2014, going to our first event, which was Uno Pro. Uh, again, we enjoyed it. In the last episode, we talk about we talked about everything that uh, we went through there, and we had a really great time. So, I noticed that we needed to do something more as a group. So, not just to be you know individuals. And again, there's the five core members that uh, you know started all this. So we started going to another. We went to another show the following month, and it just hit me that you know what, we need an identification. We need something. That's going to, you know, set us apart from, uh, you know, just going alone on an individual basis. Because I knew that our group, we were going to be together and we were going to be going to a lot of shows. So first was coming up with a name. Wanted to come up with something special, something different. And I really didn't want to go with like just regular, like WWE. Well, if you say WWE as a word, we, 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 uh, it really doesn't make any sense. So I didn't want it to be just any letters. Wanted to say something and maybe even mean something. So I knew I started, I had to start off with, well, I definitely wanted our group name to have the word wrestling in it. And being that we are such big fans, wanted the word fan in there somehow. So either fan and then later on, it made more sense to put fanatics. So with the W and the F, I started looking around with different words and what would make sense. And then came it, it came to me in, in a split second. F E W. Now, again, in the last show, we broke it down what it means, but you might as well for the new viewers, because hopefully we have a few new viewers. Yeah, more than a few. Quite a bit, quite a bit of response. And if I say few over and over, it's not on purpose, guys. It's just part of the vocabulary. So, few fanatics enjoying wrestling. Okay, so that's how it came out. So once we had our ID, our identification, we need something to represent us, like a logo, something that uh, you know we were going to be able to show. And I, I knew we wanted to get shirts. I knew we wanted to eventually open up our own little Facebook page and so forth. So now the logo itself, if you've seen it, and we have it there up, okay? You see the? Can you bring up the other logo, the colorful one? 
Okay. That one will show a little more of, of what I'm talking about. So if you see the the few has a little background to it, and that's representative of a championship belt. You know, there's a lot of shapes and sizes for championship belts. So if you see the the back the background of it is a championship belt. Because I feel that we, the few, are champions. And then underneath that, which again, uh, a lot of uh, people that have looked at our logo and looked at the shirts that we have, because this is the exact logo that we have on our shirts, they notice uh, there's something going on under there. There's a little belt. So uh, I wanted to add something a little more, a little more special to the logo. So not just words with a simple background, but I put a championship belt under there. And if you see, is the championship belt of the few. If you look on the left of the belt and on the right side of the belt, there's some letters. And those letters signify something. So everything means something here. We're going to start off with breaking it down. And it, 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 when we look at this, you're going to see the five core members being represented and the inception, the initial year that we got together. So we're going to start off with the first letter, P. Okay. So we got P. For Peter, Papa Few, Papa Few, sorry, Papa Few. No, no, you got it. So Peter, aka Papa Few. Next one, R for Rhino. Okay, so we got Rhino in the house. He is on the Few Championship belt. Now the next letter is B. That's representative of yours truly, Bogey. Now we go to the right side of it. If you see the, well, I'll go over the number in a moment. The next letter there is J. J is for J Moody. Okay. Again, he's uh, one of the founding members. He came with us to many, many shows, but life goes on. He has a great job uh, traveling up and down the East Coast. So, hey, brother, I hope you're watching. We remember you. And then the last one is L. And that one is for my partner here to the right for 24-7 Lou, for Lewis. So there we have the five core members being represented in the logo. Now, as for the number 13, the number 13 represents when was the actual year that we got together. And that was the first time where we got together for WrestleMania. So we got together for WrestleMania pay-per-view and we had an awesome time. We knew we had something going on there. We had a really good time. So that is a representation of what the logo means. So. Next time you see the logo and you, you, you see us with our few shirts, you can take a closer look and uh, you definitely have a meaning of what it means. Okay, we're going to be going over. Um, we went over to a few shows in these last few weeks. I think that we've been jam packed. Yeah, a lot of promotions. A lot of shows been going on that, that hitting here in South Florida. So the few went to uh, X Wrestling January 30th. That was followed up following weekend, February 6th with WXW. And today, we are we're excited because we're gonna go to a brand new promotion. Yep, Brain Busters. Brain Busters Pro Wrestling. So we got back to back to back. Anyway, next weekend there's luckily nothing going on, so we could take a little break, man. Yeah, so but, we can watch uh, the pay per view. Is there a pay per view of uh, WWE? I think so, but don't quote me because we're oh, oh 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 yeah yeah me too. Don't quote all me right. Either. Uh, well, well, we got what well, we got. Uh, uh, J. Few in the back. Maybe he could do a little homework and uh, let us know the exact dates of what's going on next week. Because we we do have uh, some some staff in the back that help make this happen. Uh, and one of them is J. Few. And actually, I want to give it a little shout out to J. Few. Of course, J. Few. If it wasn't for him today, our guest might not have been able to be here live, and we would have still done it over the phone. But he was actually able to get our, our guest and bring him here in person. So Jay Few, thank you very much for what you did today. You saved the show. All right. So at this point, uh, I believe it's going to be break time. Uh, I know we, we have two more minutes. Good. Uh, so we're going to be going over uh, the results of what happened in X wrestling. I actually got from uh, Richard Tingle, a synopsis of, uh, of who were the matches. Uh, we're actually going to get some weights and a little snippet on what happened in each one of the matches, which was very exciting. We were there front row, VIP. We, we saw the obsession, the reboot of X Wrestling. So that was very exciting. Then we're going to go over a little bit of what happened in WXW. I don't have the exact note, but we had a good time there. Again, those WXW is owned by AFA. Yes, from the Samoan Dynasty. Yes. 
So they came down from Mineola. They traveled for us, uh, and not just a few, but for all the Miami wrestling fans here. We actually have a pretty good base. So they came all the way from Mineola here to Miami. And we so thank them. We thank them for coming down here. You know, it makes it makes having a show down here in, in Miami. You don't have to go up to the center of the state where you, there's a lot of wrestling companies up there. Companies are coming down here to Miami and even showcasing even uh, local wrestlers, yes. putting them on their shows, bringing other wrestlers that are from outside of the state into those mm -hmm. shows. So we as fans get to enjoy that. And, and, and I like that. I love that part about all these all these shows coming down here to start off the year with so, with so much action. Oh, a lot of action. So again, Alpha and the family of wrestlers, thank you so much for making the track over here. So and and that kind of does say something about you know the uh, the 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 wrestling fan, the wrestling base here. We do have something going on here so so well that another wrestling organization traveled from Mineola to bring us a show. So they've had three shows here so far. We're gonna have a fourth one in April, and that's gonna be a lot of fun also. So at this point. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off here. We're going to take a quick little break because, you know, I do need to drink and I need to, need, need to breathe and <laughs> clean need the to breathe. here. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. So stay tuned. Hello, Masita Rica is here from The Fix at 6. You can catch a new episode every Friday at 6 and various replays throughout the week here only on 247miami.tv. All right, we need a catchphrase. Listen up or I'll kick your butt. The Fix at 6 will make you jump. Masita's lady lumps want to make you hump. Oh, yeah, throw a fist pump only on 247miami.tv. Hey, Mike, you ready to record this promo? Let's do it. Ha, ha. <clears throat> Clear your throat. <clears> throat> ha, hum. Here we go. Ready? Play. Hey, Mike, if you want to hear the best sports talk in the 305, where do you go? Just log on to 247miami.tv. What time and when, Mike? Every Monday from 3 to 5 and also catch replays throughout the week. Yeah, we talk Marlins, Heat, Hurricanes, and the Dolphins. So again, Mike, where do people go to catch the John Ed Show? 247miami.tv. Peace. I'm Dr. J host of the OC Fantasy Football Doctors, along with Good Goody, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. on 247miami.tv, where we tackle the NFL's most important fantasy-related injury news and notes for the week. We run you through all the tests, checking up on ads and drops, evaluating your lineups, and diagnosing upcoming matches to exploit, so you can go back to feeling good. You can hear all this and more on the OT Fantasy Football Doctors on Tuesday at 8 p.m. on 247miami.tv. Hi, this is Kathy Whitmire, LMHC. I'm Barbie Bonder, LCSW. And I'm Arlene Thielan, a psychotherapist. And we're from The Female Perspective. A show about life, love, and everything in between. Check out our show on Mondays at 10 p.m. on 247miami.tv. All right, guys, welcome back to the few show. We got some open lines, and uh, we have a uh, we have somebody on the line right now, uh, to see just to talk about a little bit of Miami wrestling. So, uh, so who do we have on the lines 24 7 loop? We have Terry, uh, Terry Flu. Terry, oh, from somewhere in Florida. So Terry in Florida. I read it all wrong. Sorry about that, Terry. <laughs> okay. Terry, welcome to the show. All right, Terry, you, can you hear us? I hear you loud and clear, brother. All right, so uh, Terry, so you are from Florida here. I'm originally from Clearwater, Florida, dude. Awesome. Okay, and uh, you you one of uh, you, you one of the fans here, in Miami. You, you see our shows, different promotions that we have. Yeah, dude, I'm all up in. I'm all into the scene, brother. I I went to the CCW event last week, at, last month it's in so Opalaka, and I, I heard I got some friends who are they know more about the business than I do, and uh, okay. they they tuned me into the few show, and uh, awesome, you know they heard about the, the the debut show, so I tuned in because you know I'm all about wrestling, and I saw the well, first show, you. and I see a lot of potential, brother. I, I love what you're doing, and I see the love of the sport familiar. on your half, yeah, on your does. behalf. And, and I see that you're as passionate as wrestling as I am, brother. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, quick, quick, quick question. Uh, you mentioned something about CCW. So, the, you saw their show and uh, the one in December. Yeah, they had an event at the the Opalaka Flea Market. Okay, how, how'd you like it? Uh, great show. There's this new tag team called the Guadalupe Brothers. Yeah, they had oh, they were great good. Great chemistry. Great. Uh, the great patriotism of Mexico, and that they were incorporated their their lucha libre uh, skills okay. well, and uh, great great matchup yeah, against the the, you know, yeah, the Mario brothers. Well, uh, can I ask you? A qu I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, you sound familiar. You wouldn't happen to be Hulk Hogan? I mean, that would be ridiculous. It's okay, but Hulk Hogan. You got it, dude. I was testing Hulk your knowledge because I know <laughs> Hulk Hogan on heard. on the few show. Yes, you know I, I wanted to Terry. Oh my God. Yeah, it makes sense. You, you figured me out, dude. I, I, you know. Well, you, you got me, man. Your voice is pretty distinct, for sir. Uh, welcome to the few show. I, I'm honored. Uh, and and I'm sorry. You said you heard the uh, about the few show. How? Because I got some. I got friends in the industry, dude. Even though I hanged up my tights a long a few years back. Quite a while I got, ago. I, I, I keep my ear in tune to the streets, dude. Okay. And, and my friends, they're still in the business. Wow. And they heard about the few. Because they've been going, doing, going to events and they see these few signs. And, yeah. you know, yeah. in social media, they heard about the, the, the upcoming show, the debut show. Awesome. And, you know, uh, they, they let me onto it. And I tuned in and I said, you know what? I like what these guys are about. They're well, on the come up. Well, sir, thank you so much. And actually, uh, maybe some of your friends might have seen the few sign live in WWE Monday Night Raw because uh, my buddy Jay Few and myself, we were there. We were there about like 15 rows out, uh, up and we had our sign up in the air just go, going left and right. And we had a lot of people uh, saying, hey, we saw you guys there on, on live. So uh, I... I I have it's amazing. Even prepared on a second episode. We got Terry Hulk Hogan, Mr. Hulk. Hogan. Well, Hulk Hogan, um, just wanted to ask a quick question because we only got uh, so much time. If there is a chance somehow that you might be interested in, maybe we're doing our next show in a month from now, uh, being on our show here live, I mean, would that be something that Hulk Hogan can do? Definitely, Captain Bogey. Yeah, oh, there we God. go. Okay, lining them up. Awesome, awesome. Next month we're gonna have uh, our next uh, episode. I will give you all the information offline and all that good stuff. But uh, Hulk Hogan, thank you so much. Any last words uh, for our viewers? Yeah, what you gonna do when Hulkamania and the few run down, run wild on him. you on the live show next month? Next month, brother. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You have a great day, and you just made my week. <laughs> Holy cow. Have a good day, sir. Amen, brother. Amen. It's a beautiful thing, dude. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. Well, there you what go. do you think about that? Episode two, you have uh, Hulk Hogan online already. Amazing. Did you did you contact someone and no. have Hulk I Hogan thought it was you. Him? I don't know. I, I know. No. I mean, I made a few phone calls and I told somebody to call in, but. All right. Well, guys, I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, but uh, uh, actually. Let's go over real quick, just like we did in the last show. But this one's going to be a little more toned down because uh, I can see the hairs on Lou's uh, <laughs> neck uh, raising. We're just going to go over a quick disclaimer about our show, what our show's about. So this way, everybody's on the same page. Again, we are here to have fun. We hope we hope we have something for everyone. If you're a wrestling fan, you are going to appreciate this. And if you're not a wrestling fan, I'm going to try to entertain you. And now, if uh, the goal of this show is to highlight what is going on in the Miami area wrestling scene through our eyes. You know, we are not claiming to be the experts of Miami wrestling, but as fans, oh, we have a lot of passion. So that's what we're here to do, share our passion with you. So we're going to try to inform you on results of different wrestling events that uh, we go to, because we go to quite a few. We keep busy. And again, the last, last thing is we're here to have fun, so disclaimer's done. Was that one okay? Yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone, everyone has to know. <laughs> um, now, very interesting. From the last show, we had uh, a guest, Josue Melendez from X Wrestling. And there was a point in the conversation towards the end that he kind of uh, got my attention. And he said, he looked at me, and you can rewind the video. He said, if you were an owner of a wrestling promotion, uh, no, I'm sorry. 
That was that's not his quote. Okay, let's get the quote. Uh, I hate when this happens. Okay, well, he looked at me and he said, "You know what? If you were a manager, I think you would be uh, dirty, and uh, you know, you would really, really, you know, do a lot of bad things or something like that." Mm -hmm. So that kind of made me think. Oh my God, what was I showing throughout? You know, throughout that episode <laughs> that made him think that. So. I'm going to go ahead and, and pose that question a little later on to our guest, uh, Jay Dog, and ask him the same thing. Uh, you know, if I was a uh, manager, uh, you know, ma a manager of a wrestler, what kind of manager, you know, if he, he would think that I would be. So we're going to go ahead and, and propose that question later on. Now, we uh, put up um, a interactive question on the few page. And the interactive question was, if you were a owner of a wrestling promotion, what would you name your promotion? So we have quite a few uh, uh, different responses. So we're going to go over those uh, in a little bit when we come to our second break. Now, I just want to give a quick little uh, recap on what happened in X Wrestling. Yes, where they're that, live. That was so much fun. There were there were so many things that happened in that show that it, it left us with to be continued because it, it it ended in a high note, and I'll share what that high note was, which uh, I cannot believe the owner poor guy was part of so for the first wrestling match of the uh x wrestling show and again this was uh brought by richard tingle so thank you very much for uh sharing this with us the first match was shogun weighing in at 281 pounds big guy oof versus insane drax weighing at 350 pounds even bigger are you serious these guys were just getting the big bigger guys bigger. Uh, running around the running around the ring. Well, uh, so so here we go in the opening match of that event. Max rest, masked wrestler from Japan, Shogun. He faced a large and massive masked wrestler, even bigger than him, Insane Drax. So at the end, Shogun gave a valiant effort, but Insane Drax was a little bit too much for him. Insane Drax won by pinfall via the big splash, and that was huge. Uh, did you feel it? Yeah, they, I, we were so close to the ring. We felt everything we shake right around there. Like, like, oh, the match is over. So that match was at 3 minutes and 57 seconds. Next match was with Julian Kal Kalevra. I got your name. A little yeah. uh, little, little recap music I just Good. put in there for you to go so, off script. So we had Kalevra, which he was one of the initial uh, wrestlers that we saw when we first started with Uno Pro and then ICW. He was... He's always been entertaining. So, Calebra versus Cuban Tude. Cuban Tude. And uh, that, was, that was a very interesting match. That was the second match. And actually, there was also Black Thunder. Black Thunder. Weird-looking guy. Had some tattoos. Uh, but uh, he, he was like one of those luchadors. So, there, there was a triple threat that saw the Max Wrestler Cuban Tude and Max Wrestler Black Thunder work together as team. Again, Calebra. So, they first started off with beating up on him. Well, the match itself was pretty entertaining at the end. However, Julian Calebra won by pinfall over Cuban 2. So that was 2 minutes and 53 seconds of match. In our third one, this one was not only entertaining, but it's a match that you will not see anywhere else. Straight from Puerto Rico, 100% lucha. We had Payatronic at 170 pounds and Chris. The Chosen Diaz at 190 pounds. So these are wrestlers that were brought specifically and straight for X Wrestling from Puerto Rico. And actually, they flew out the next day. Wow, this, this how, came in for the match? Wow. This is how exclusive this match was. So the match wrestler Biotronic dazzled with his high flying in the start of the match. But Chris Diaz fought back with his power attack. And uh, it went back and forth. There was a lot of high flying. There were some moves that we haven't seen here before. I have seen 100% Lucha video recaps. And they do have their wrestling is uh, a bit of a different style than what we're used to here. So you guys got to check them out. 100% Lucha. But at the end of all this, uh, let's see. Piatronic was, in, was inside out with a vicious Layer trick and later a solid power bomb near the end of the match. Chris Diaz won by pinfall via the Fisherman Buster Suplex. Wow, they got all these names. Nine minutes and ten seconds. The shout, the crowd 
show their appreciation for a notable match. And yes, uh, we definitely appreciate it. And because we knew we were watching something totally different here. So that was that match three and match four. Ah, we had the return of we have not seen her in quite a while. And actually, that's because she was out in Japan. La Rosa Negra. Yes. Remember from the long beginning? time. Yeah, yeah. I remember from uh... again. We got to know her in early on when we started going out to the wrestling events, 2014, 2015. Very entertaining, especially when she comes in. She does a little bit of something shaking in the back, <laughs> and you know that kind of gets the party started. So she came out. Uh, looked like she was just gonna talk, but um, for that one there. Uh, there was another wrestler that came out, Su Young. Well, Su Young uh, uh, just had some words with her, and they started. They started to fight. They, this was a real fight, actually. Where did the where did the match ended up going halfway through? Oh, they were all around the ring and everything. They were they the were ladies' the match place. was pretty significant. They went out to the seats. They were tearing things apart. They were tearing each other apart. They were right there with the fans. So you know, that was a very notable match. It was very enjoyable. Now, for this one here, uh, Sue Young, she became the ex-wrestling female pain division champ by submission. Uh, and she did a Boston Crab. And that was seven minutes and 41 seconds. So that was every, a very entertaining match. And we can't wait to see what happens in the next, uh, in the next um, event. For wrestling match number five, we had Sasso Rivera at 350 pounds versus Lockjaw. Uh, so they were teaming up and they were teaming up against the Asylum. The Asylum. Mm. Such a crazy looking guy. <laughs> well, in this fifth match, it was supposed to be a tag team match. It turned to a handicap match because uh, with Lockjaw, he never came out for that match. He left Sasso Rivera out there by himself. So at, at that point, uh, in the end, the Black Skull, uh, that was a, a manager. He just came out of nowhere. I had never seen him before. But oh, yeah, yeah. he just looks so evil. Dressed all but, in white. But he had a nice suit. <laughs> he was all evil, the Skull, but he had a nice suit. So I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't like you, but hey, dude, you're dressing pretty good. White suit, very, it looked like a, a, a custom tailor. Uh, but with a black mask, and he was just uh, spitting out orders. So at that point, uh, the Asylum won by pinfall over interference at 10 minutes and 20, 29 seconds of the match. Here we go to number six. Ooh. All right, so we're going to go uh, to um, the last one, the seventh one, which was Puerto Rican Hound Dog and Camelot well, versus Camelot. Well, that was the initial uh, match that was scheduled. But unfortunately, Camelot, he got hurt. So in was brought Lockjaw. So in that match, you can imagine it was two dogs in the pound. It wasn't even a ring at that point. It was a dog. It was <laughs> a dog, dog pound. pound. <laughs> so these guys, they were just going at it. Hound Dog kept control of the match until Lockjaw caught him with a slam off the turnbuckle. That one was a nice little move there. That's not easy to bring down a guy that big. So the chaos continued. Kendo sticks were brought in until. Tony Melendez came out to restore some civil, civil, civility over the happenings. Because at this point, Josue Melendez came out also. He saw that the Black Mask, I guess that's his name, the Black Mask was uh, interfering in the matches. So the boss came out to, to say, hey, you're interfering in my matches. And what happened? Well, unfortunately, the boss got grabbed by Insane Drax. Now we're talking a guy of 350 pounds. And he slammed him into the ring. Almost went through the ring. Yeah. But right through the right into the ring. At that point, of course, Hound Dog was disqualified. They did have Lockjaw handcuffed. He could not do anything. So we know that that story will be continuing. So can't wait to see what happens there. So that's the quick recap on X Wrestling's Fight Night One, January 30th. All right. Let's yeah. Do it. So yeah, that was that, that was that was fun. I can't wait for that stuff. And uh, uh, what is it? Let's do a little tease. What, what do we have coming up for the next segment? Uh, for the next segment, um, we are well. We're gonna leave it for that. Uh, but we do have our special guest that's gonna be coming in studio. in studio. Wow. Yes. In studio, live. Jay Dog yeah. from CCW. So 
Stay in tune. I'm pretty sure he has a lot of things to share with us. Yeah. Look at the crowd. The crowd is going wild. We need security up in here. All right. 1247 Miami.tv. I'm Craig Cook, host of Metal and Mayhem. I'm bringing you a brand new season of Metal and Mayhem this fall, right here on 247Miami.tv. Follow me on Twitter at Real Craig Cook to submit your requests and have all your feedback made fun of live on the air. Metal and Mayhem, Fridays this fall, 247Miami.tv. Do you know why we pulled you over? Was it because I was speeding? No. It's because you weren't listening to the... Tune in Thursdays at 8 p.m. on 24-7 Miami. This is Wilma Shakespeare. Anger. And Disaster Chief. From Miami Vice City Rollers. Inviting you to tune in to Ring Crash Radio on 247Miami.tv. New shows every Saturday at 9 p.m. With encore replays Monday at noon and 10 p.m. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and again at 10 p.m. Find out everything you've ever wanted to know about roller derby in the 305. Get the 411 on the women's team. The men's team. And even the juniors. Ring Crash Radio. Ring Crash Radio. Ring Crash Radio. On 247 Miami.tv. Calor y sabor. Todos los jueves a las 6 de la tarde, con tu amiga Diana Carolina, te traigo sabor de Miami, un show de entretenimiento, desde noticias hasta un throwback Thursday. No te lo pierdas, una hora de calor y sabor. Aquí en 24-7 Miami. Hi guys, I'm James. I'm Adrian. We've got some very exciting news about our upcoming show, Cannon, Cannon Fire. Fire. What are we going to talk about, Adrian? We're going to talk about everything science fiction. So, movies? Yes. Video games? Yes. TV shows? Checkmate on that. Awesome. We're also going to be seen around our local uh, comic book events, so you're going to see us at a lot of cons, hopefully at some of the comic book shops around town. Hopefully they'll be giving free stuff, and we'll let you know about it. That'd be awesome. And we've also got some interviews lined up for you guys. So please remember to check us out on 247miami.tv. And like us on Facebook. What's up, guys? WWE Superstar Kofi Kingston. I'm Wade Barrett. This is WWE Superstar The Miz and 24-7 Miami.tv. And it is awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fuel Ooh, Show. Yes. And here to my left, we have our special guest for today, episode two. J Dog in the house. Yeah. I'm proud of DJ Dog Brooks. What's going on, fellas? How is How's it, it going, brother? How's it going? Thank you very much for getting coming here to the show. And again, of course, we have to be thankful for J Few and his wheels because they made it happen. That's what so, it is. At this point, uh, so so how you been, man? I'm doing pretty good. It feels good to be back down here in Miami. I uh, was just here last weekend at that WXW event. Um, you were talking about yes. earlier. Made my debut with them, so uh, it feels good to be back in Miami again, and uh, heading up to Fort Lauderdale tonight for a CCW event in Fort Lauderdale, um, and then we also have an event tomorrow for CCW in its uh, Opalaka Flea Market at 1 p.m., so awesome. staying busy, staying busy. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit you with the bogey fast five questions. Uh -huh, These are five questions that, that I'm going to be hitting all our guests with because it's going to kind of give us a picture of who we have here in front of us. So, are you ready for the bogey fast five questions? Let's get it popping. Let's do it. First question. Let's do it. When was the moment you started watching wrestling? That's easy. When I was born. Damn. <laughs> Been watching wrestling as soon as since you I was came born. Out the TV screen was my going first, to my first ring, my first word was ring. Uh, that was the first word I ever spoke. Uh, oh. I didn't say mama or dada. I pointed at the ring and said <laughs> ring. So, you know, okay. I've been watching wrestling since I was born. And that's what okay. basically got me to maintain it and stay in it. All right. So you, you started to paint a, a picture well, here for me. Well, we had the wrestling school my whole life. My father trained people how to wrestle. Rusty Brooks trained people how to wrestle from the time I was born. So I grew up around Did you training and watching people. Rusty Brooks? Yeah, that's Rusty my father. Brooks? You know that. Everybody knows that. You know, that's why okay. I'm J.R. Brooks. You feel me? God, no. For the ones that don't know, I'm just making believe. So. And JK, JK on Facebook and Instagram and everything else, you know. That's it. You know how it is. Question number two. 
Who are your top five wrestlers of all time? Your fave five. Give them to me. Now, see, that's that's a tricky one because, I mean. We could have 20 of them. I, no, I, I mean, the thing is, 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 is like, I watch everybody and okay. study everybody. Um, far from starstruck by anybody. So it's hard to say favorites, you know, because. I say who I used to watch and everything growing up as a kid and okay. stuff like that. Okay, so let's go there then. You know, when it goes to favorites, you know, I'm my I'm my own favorite. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm trying to be in the locker room with these boys, so okay. you know, and mix it up with anybody. But um, I'd have to say my number one would be growing up watching was Hulk Hogan, um, being able to be carried around the locker room on Hulk Hogan's shoulders when I was three years old. And, really awesome. You know, stuff like that and wow. and seeing that feud growing up and. That's pretty much him. Um, I'd say number two would be Ric Flair, um, Ric with Flair. everything he's accomplished. You know, I gotta gotta have him on there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go more the time when I actually started wrestling and got into it. Um, who was big at that time, and that's The Rock. Um, being from yeah. Miami and seeing him as Dwayne Johnson playing for the U as spring training and getting autographs wow. then, and. You know, so I've been following him for a while and everything, and he actually ran the ropes in the backyard at uh, the school we had going up. So wow, he came there one day and by Barry Houston and ran the ropes there one day. So awesome experience. Um, number four, I say Macho Man Randy Savage. You know, rest in peace. You know, I got madness. I gotta say him. You know, because that was the feud back then was Hogan and Macho Man and everything that was going on then. So that's something I grew up watching. Exactly. And last, I'm gonna go off of WWF and this is I was mainly a WWF guy watching as a kid growing up but I also watched WCW as well okay and I'm gonna go with Sting with my last one the, ah. the old school red white and blue Sting the, the original yeah. blonde hair um I, I wasn't a fan when he went to the other gimmick with the crow gimmick I just like the blonde hair and okay you didn't, you didn't like the the black uh, no nah, I wasn't into that okay and, uh, that's wasn't my thing, but I'd say those are the five that I could think of off the top of my head that I would pick. Okay, so the wrestler J Dog, <laughs> who is J Dog? Give us a little bit of insight of All who right. that is. Well, second generation wrestler, you know, with my father Rusty Brooks and Bobby Brooks, and pretty much uh, what got me into wrestling itself and actually training. I'd have to give that to Billy Fives because. Okay. He used to make sure every practice he went to, he'd come and find me in the house and drag me out. <laughs> 12 years old, and dragging me out to go practice and train. At 12 years and old? Yeah, I was training. Wow. I was rolling better than half the students when I was 12. So oh, my God. Okay. That's pretty much got into it. When I was 15, started refereeing. Uh, 16, decided I want to wrestle. So I started wrestling as a sniper. Did that for about six months. And Bobby Rogers at FOW did a unmasking and – I became J Dog, and I was J Dog ever since. Oh, so you were in a mask as sniper? Yeah, I was a sniper. Okay. My first gimmick. And 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 what was the sniper about? How come you came came up with? with it was that? just something that would cover my whole body and cover my face. I had a mask that was straight black, no eyes, no no, no nose, no mouth. It just had black mesh for eyes. Gotcha. And cover my facial features. I was a young, looked really really young at the time, and I smiled a lot. So it covered all that okay. up, and I used to wear camouflage. Everything that covered head to toe so you don't really see anything oh what a character yeah, it was it was fun but it was hard to breathe <laughs> so right. oh, it, was, it was good to unmask it and do that and then my second year in the business being able to go overseas to lima peru and i went over there and wrestled a four four match tour over there at 17 years old so that was an nice. eye opener for the business as yeah. opposed to anything else and, how, how was that experience going in you know into a <laughs> south american country with wrestling how were the fans there? They were so supportive and appreciative. They, We were the WWE to them. Damn. To them, that's how we were their stars. We were the gladiators. We were the stars there. And, and you'd walk and be noticed everywhere. We had to go with security 911. And wow. Me and, uh, Stud, me and Stud Magnum uh, left one night without security and walked around Lima, got lost, and still came made it back to the Bruce Hotel in time. And it was fun times. That fun kind times. of stuff you do at a young, <laughs> young age, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, you know, wrestling, we have in wrestling, there's characters, drama, psychology, my skills, athleticism. What's your favorite part of wrestling? I say everything, man. Okay. Like, you have to have a little bit of everything in order to, to make it at any point in this business. You have to have a little bit of all of it. But one thing I like the most now that I didn't when I first started is being on the mic. Uh, I grab the mic at a show and, and just go. I don't have to even think about what I'm saying. I cut promos, just go in front of a camera and okay. cut a promo and 
when I was green, though, I hated being on the mic. We'd do run-ins, and my dad would go to hand me the mic, and I'd walk away. Oh, <laughs> I'm wow. like, nah, I'm not talking. Okay, but, it can be a little intimidating. You know, yeah, I started, mic, started doing sure. music. I started doing music and going to performing at clubs and having people actually sing your songs back to you with your own lyrics and mm. gave me more confidence on the mic. And then I started grabbing the mic at shows, and it just rolled from there. And what was your MC name? It was a uh, Playboy Dallas PBD. Damn, <laughs> Playboy Dallas. Playboy right. Dallas. Damn, we got Playboy Dallas up in the house. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, right, well, you know what? I want to know what some of the what were some of the the moves that you would do, like for, with with all those different characters. Like, what were the different special moves? Well, with the wrestling, yeah, the wrestling yeah. Moves, I only had the two characters. I did uh, the the sniper, which really, I, I pretty much put everybody over. You know, that was my thing. Okay. It was I was a rookie. I was green, so I really didn't have any finishers or anything set in stone for that for that character. It was just pretty much getting my feet wet and making other people look good and making myself look good in the process that I can help put people over and do that and it's whatever. It's it's the business. Okay. So then when I went to J-Dog, I just had my 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 moves that I actually incorporate in every match and came up with my own finishers, Doggy Dog Time, which is my version of a DDT to an elbow drop. And I have the Dog Pound where I put throw them up on my shoulder and flip it into a DDT and mm -hmm. all different different moves that, that I've come up with over the years of just taking two moves, putting them together and doing little things cool. like that. So got to be unique. Yeah. <laughs> got to be original. Got to be original. All that having to do everything you see on TV, I just, I, I can't, I, I'm not into that. Okay. You know what I mean? You go to a show and you're seeing all the WWE finishers and it's like, where's your finisher? How are mm -hmm. you going to market yourself? Um, how are you going to stand out and be different? With social media nowadays, you can promote yourself. That's where I take pride yeah. in is being able to promote yourself online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you do it, you have to promote yourself. And to not promote yourself or just to have a personal page to me is ridiculous because why would a promotion want to push you if they don't see a following behind you? So. Exactly. All right. And just to end this bogey fast five question, the last one is, if you retire tomorrow, huh? how would, if, huh? for, if you retire it, tomorrow, it, it, it ain't happening. Let's say you were 100 <laughs> years old not and happening. j Dog got a cane. If you retire, I will tomorrow. hit you with the cane. <laughs> <laughs> I will come down and I will hit you in the head with the cane. <laughs> All right. So after you attack me, how would you want to be remembered? What is, Man. What is it that you want to leave as a, as a legacy with people saying this was him? To be honest, I can't even answer that. And, okay. and people can't answer like what you would want your legacy to yeah. be. You haven't even lived it out yet. You know, like, got you. and I haven't lived half of anything that I want to do so far, especially in wrestling, even though I've been doing it so long. It's, I mean, I got I got my birthday coming up in a couple of weeks, and then that basically marks that if I didn't take a two year break from wrestling, this would be my 18th year right here mm. wrestling. So wow. really, I only got 16 of, of wrestling and everything. Is I did take a couple of years off and everything. Um, due to other reasons we won't speak about, but uh, <laughs> no problem. All right. But yeah, like I mean, I, I I don't know what anybody would say. You know, my main thing is wrestling, and yeah. I did music for a little while, but. I would think it would have to do with wrestling because most of the people know me as a professional wrestler and that's how I carry myself. So it would have to be something to do with that. Okay. But I right. couldn't tell you what they would say. Some people would, like majority of them, because I was always a bad guy, so the majority of them would all say I suck. <laughs> okay, gotcha. You suck, he sucks, all that kind of stuff, you know, but any he's good heat. So y'all can keep hating, y'all can keep heating, and, and I'll keep smiling in your face and loving it that you're being entertained. So exactly. That's and, what it is. And in wrestling sometimes, he is a good thing. So, all right, guys. So we're going to be taking I, a I can get a lot of it, too. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> well, you. Backstage and oh, backstage. You know, everywhere I can get some heat if I wanted to. Well, so. in front of the ring, we've seen you do your thing, dog. So, all right, guys. We're going to be taking our next break here. So you guys stay well, tuned. Well. Come back to the few show. Yeah. Promo. Hello, Masita Rica is here from The Fix at 6. You can catch a new episode every Friday at 6 and various replays throughout the week here only on 247miami.tv. All right, we need a catchphrase. Listen up or I'll kick your butt. The Fix at 6 will make you jump. Masita's lady lumps want to make you hump. Oh, yeah. Throw a fist pump only on 247miami.tv. Hey, Mike, you ready to record this promo? Let's do it. Ha, ha, <clears throat> clear your throat. <clears> throat> ha, hmm. Right, here we go, ready? Play.
Hey, Mike, if you want to hear the best sports talk in the 305, where do you go? Just log on to 247miami.tv. What time and when, Mike? Every Monday from 3 to 5, and also catch replays throughout the week. Yeah, we talk Marlins, Heat, Hurricanes, and the Dolphins. So again, Mike, where do people go to catch the John Ed Show? 247miami.tv. Peace. I'm Dr. J, host of the OT Fantasy Football Doctors, along with Good Goody, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. on 247miami.tv, where we tackle the NFL's most important fantasy-related injury news and notes for the week. We run you through all the tests, checking up on ads and drops, evaluating your lineups, and diagnosing upcoming matches to exploit, so you can go back to the feeling good. You can hear all this and more on the OT Fantasy Football Doctors on Tuesday at 8 p.m. on 24-7 Miami TV. Hi, this is Kathy Whitmire, LMHC. I'm Barbie Bonder, LCSW. And I'm Arlene Thielon, a psychotherapist. And we're from The Female Perspective. A show about life, love, and everything in between. Check out our show on Mondays at 10 p.m. on 24-7 Miami.tv. Hey, I'm Kevin Hart. And I'm Josh Gad. And right now we're on 24-7 Miami. That's right. And... All right, so welcome back to The Fuse Show. Here we are in our last... Hey, we had an opening by Kevin Hart right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A few with Kevin Hart. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, how'd you get uh, Kevin Hart? When'd you hang out with him? Well, yeah, we were at for the premiere of um, The Wedding Ringer. Or what is it, Wedding uh, Ringer? Yeah, yeah, The Wedding Ringer. Yeah, we were there. We met Josh Gad. We Funny. interviewed uh, Kevin Hart. So, yeah, 24 7 Miami's everywhere. Jeez, 24 7 Luna's quite a bit of people. In the last segment, you, you hang out with uh, Miss? Yeah, we and, had. Uh, and Cena? You heard Cena in there? That's crazy, man. I don't know who I'm sitting next to. This guy's a monster. All right, guys. So welcome back. Here I have my guest, J Dog in the house. J Dog Brooks. That's just what it is. So we got to know J Dog, the wrestler. Hit him with the bogey fast five. Now let's, let's talk about a little bit of what he does behind the scenes. Because uh, I had a quick chat with him, and he surprised me with some of the stuff that he, that he's doing. Not only that, but I've noticed, and and this is one of the main reasons why I asked him to uh, be my guest here on this show. He's doing a lot of stuff uh, social media wise. He really pushes not only himself. He has uh, a group that, that he's with, um, CCW. He is promo- he promotes. Uh, he's promoting a lot. So that's something that you know you know I really like to see, and uh, definitely wanted to get a little bit behind you know what this is all about. So, J Dog. So talk to me. So aside from wrestling, when when you're in front of us, you know you know suited up. With all the handkerchiefs everywhere, and after you do your bandanas, match, bandanas, bandanas, not bandanas. handkerchiefs, <laughs> they bandanas. You so know what I mean, that's heart. You feel yes, me? <laughs> bandanas. Uh, so after you're done with that, and you're in front of us, uh, what else is it that you do with the wrestling scene? Uh, right now, I'm an assistant trainer at the Main Event Training Center over wow. there in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it runs off of Oakland Park Boulevard in 95. Um, you can you can check that out online. They have. You can check through a uh, Coastal Championship Wrestling okay. or CCW Events, um, dot com, and they'll give you the information for the main event training center. Um, it's head head ran by uh, Pablo Marquez. Yes. Um, so he's the head head the trainer, ground. the head the head owner. Um, then we have the assistant trainers as my father Rusty Brooks. Um, we also have Gangrel, who my father trained. Oh, wow. So he's a a trainer that's there at all our practices. Hey, he, he and really I also butt? he really does yeah. good. You want to try? Scary. You can, I'll, I'll introduce you and see if, oh, yeah. if you can survive. If I got a steak. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, and I help train there as well, help teach. Um, have We have a good core group of students right now, okay. and um, the future of CCW is right there, and we're breeding them, and we're, we're working on them right there at the school. Awesome. Uh, so as a trainer, what what is it that you're looking at? So aside from seeing what they do, what are you trying to uh, infuse in them? And, and Everything. Like, I mean, I don't hold nothing back. I, I I don't care if somebody comes and I train them and they take my spot. That's the point. You know, I'm trying to get them wow. better. So okay. I, te- I teach Real them talk. everything, all the little things, everything they need to know um, from beginners to uh, advanced. Even people that have already been trained can come through and get refreshed up and okay. get tweaked a little bit. And we all the little things we do uh, with promos and all the working aspects, all the different aspects of pro wrestling. It's just like we do a little bit of everything there. So Awesome. It works out, and you get your money's worth when you go there too. With all the all the training that you can get with the trainers that we have, I mean, 
some of the best trainers right here in South Florida that you can even ask for. Mm -hmm. And it's right there in Fort Lauderdale, right off of 95. Convenient main event training center. You can even uh, hashtag METC for main event training center and it'll pop up all through Facebook, all the posts. So you'll be able to go right on and get a direct line where you can actually call Pablo yourself nice. and speak with them and he can actually answer any questions that you might need. And we're there Monday and Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. So it's pretty busy there. So question. So j Dog growing up with Rusty Brooks, how was that? How was that, you know, growing up with Yeah, It all depends. Of, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, how did you, you look know? at it, if you can share with us? It was fun, mm -hmm. I mean, okay. but it was – you well, get you you cornered into yeah you get cornered into one aspect of life that's gotcha. the main thing okay. you know what i mean like that's why i got a lot of mischief is when i experienced on my own after i got out of sports growing up year round and was able to hang on the streets for a little bit in high school mm -hmm. and then i learned the street life and you know if, if i'd have known a little bit more of the street life a little earlier you know i would have been prepared for some of the stuff that yeah. i went through later but everything happens in life for a reason so all right you just got to deal with it and move on <laughs> so give us an idea of uh, the different promotions that you've been in because you just don't just hang here in Miami. You've been around, right? Central Florida. There's I've been in so many different alphabet organizations that aren't even around anymore. Ah, <laughs> so okay. I've been through so many. But just recently, I started back up in September last year, and I've been hitting it pretty hard. Right now, currently, I'm, I'm working with six different companies this year in mm. 2016 right now as we speak. Wow. So, yeah, it's picking up a lot for me. Uh, mainly CCW, Coastal Championship Wrestling, ccwevents.com. You can look them up. Um, we have a lot of shows coming up in line with them. Uh, okay. We actually have a show tonight for CCW um, at the Extreme Action Park in Fort Lauderdale, the Block okay. Party 3. Um, tomorrow, that's the, the flyer you have up right now. It's for tomorrow. That's on Valentine's Day. So what better thing is to go bring your date to a wrestling show for free yeah. on Valentine's Day. See some sweat, you know, some at blood, 1 p.m. And it's early, so after you can go out and do your thing, you know. But that's tomorrow, 1 p.m. for CCW. Um, CCW also has another event March 5th where we're kicking off March. Um, that right there is going to be in North Lauderdale, so we're kicking off March with that show. Um, it's going to be a big show. We actually have a bunch of wrestlers coming down from Brooklyn, New York, that nobody wow. down here has seen. So okay. far, I wrestled down here. So it'll be a nice show for free right there on March 5th. Then we're going to go on and do the Our Town America. It's a festival in Coral Springs, and that's on March 11th, and that's also a free event. This is all leading up, and there we're going to have some match announcements for the following week. This is all leading up to March Mayhem, the big show for CCW gotcha. this year. Okay. So uh, we'll have match announcements live right here on March 11th. Um, so with that, you'll be able to hear about just matches you haven't even heard of. There's only been one announced match so far for the March 19th show. Okay. So you'll be able to hear, see a couple people that, you know, you're going to see the very next week. And, and it, it'll all lead up to a, a big, amazing show that we have on March 19th. Now that show is something serious. That one is called March Mayhem. Mm. And it's right there at the Coral Springs Charter School. It's going to feature former WWE star Carlito. Oh, so Carlito wow. will be there. Um, he's he gonna, will be. He's gonna spit in our faces <laughs> if you're not cool. Yeah. Okay. So if you're you cool, you cool. you'll be all right. You know. You gotta but, be cool like this. But but Carlito will be there, and we also have the one announced match is myself and my tag team partner TTG. Um, I represent New Blood Rising. That's my new tag team faction that I've I've created. Um, so nice. me and my partner TTG are taking on two ECW originals that night. Wow. So it's going to be a war. We're going to go extreme. It's okay. March Mayhem, and we're going to bring the mayhem. And it's going to be myself and TTG as New Blood Rising taking on Pablo Marquez Ooh. and Sabu. Sabu. Ooh. The homicidal, genocidal, Holy suicidal wow. Sabu. Hard-bodied. <laughs> um, that guy has done it all so, to himself. So needless to say, I'm bringing my A game to that one. And <laughs> all, all these Sabu. matches that I'm going through right now are in preparation for that, for that event right there, CCW. And they already have tickets on sale through PayPal. You can order your tickets right now at ccwevents.com. So you can go there, order your tickets through PayPal, and it's going to be a big one. And I'll tell you what, if that Super Genie gets in my way, she might have to get pimp smacked. You know what uh -oh. I'm saying? Because I ain't going to put up with that either. So <laughs> Super if, Genie, what was well, she about? She she's his manager. She, she just ain't going to stick her nose in my business. Plus, we'll have a Buddha Dean out there with us. You know what I mean? So. Okay. We'll be taken care of with AOD since we just like aligned ourselves with them. And, nice. you know, so Buddha Dean will be out there to have our back. But 
He told me I, I, when I'm out there and I'm in the motion, you know, like I've done to, to female wrestlers before that have actually wrestled me. I don't take it easy. I will beat you up if wow. you're in that ring with me. So if she gets in my way, I might have to pin smack her once or twice. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it, it might happen. His way. It might happen. Have a nice, nice March 19th. Y'all need to be there for that one. CCW. Y'all need to be there for that one. Sounds good. Well, listen, we're going to go real quick to our interactive question that we put on the few page. And I want you to think about this one. If you were an owner of a wrestling promotion, what would you name your promotion? So we had quite a few uh, responses here. We got one from uh, Brian Cardona. He will name his B-I-C-W. Okay. Bloody Independent Championship Wrestling. Sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sounds, sounds interesting. Bloody. It sounds like a CZW type of uh, deathmatch company. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Bill Ryan. I won't be in there, but <laughs> <laughs> he put down his company would be his promotion would be run and gun championship wrestling. Man, that sounds a little rough. So it, yeah. they each got their own uh gats and would wrestle <laughs> get down. All right. Uh Albert and Andre, Albert from MFG. Albert, there He's you go. I remember you. Himself uh, and bear with me on this one. E M F G J C W. The alphabet. <laughs> Pretty much. He only missed a few letters from a the whole ABC. <laughs> His would be Extreme Main Fan Gang Jungle Championship Wrestling. It sounds so backyarder to me. Yeah. And, <laughs> like for real. And listen, Come on. I thought more of you, Albert, man. And, and if I were to tell my buddy, hey, 24 7 Lou, yo, we got to go to E M F G K C W <laughs> next week, man. Right, listen, Come on now. Kind of, that's too long. Okay. Uh, Louis Chacon, aka 24 7 Lou. That's me. He would name his oh, let's hear The this one. Slam. The Slam. Yeah. Uh, All right. Please expand a little bit on The Slam. You know, I would, I would just call my event uh, or my promotion The Slam because uh, a lot of action, a lot of wrestling. And it just makes you interesting what what's gonna happen. You know, I, I don't want to go like too much like the alphabet like the other guys because I saw those other guys. And I'm like, nah, it's too long. So I want something different that'll stick in your mind, like the okay. slam. Oh, oh, so so the letters wouldn't really mean anything. It's just the word itself. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't That's working, right. but you know what? I'm gonna start thinking about that. I think so. I think this might be a good one and copyrighted quick. Hit. <laughs> All right, and then the last one here we have from Nisi. Hers would oh, be. Oh, here we go. Let's see this one. A O D C W. Uh, of course. Army of Darkness. How could I not figure that one? Wrestling. <laughs> How could named, I not figure that one? <laughs> named after my brother-in-law's army. So well, army I'm a part of that army, and we need to have NBR in that name too. Then Shit. Yo, we gotta add that one to the list. <laughs> nice. Okay. NBR uh, gotta be up in there. New blood rising all day, every day. You know what I mean? Excellent. All right, ladies and gents, we are coming here towards the end of see, our. You didn't even want to ask me about mine. Oh yes, yes. You, you see, was, you don't forgot yeah, I was already. Hit the drum roll. You know, I was gonna hit the drum roll. Nah, you was going on. <laughs> you was uh, off that topic already. You know what I mean? There we go. There we go. Oh, J Dog. If you All had right. your own wrestling promotion, what would you name your promotion? All right. To be honest, I was opening up my own promotion. I ran SCCW before with myself and uh, Joey Sand at the time, so we ran SCCW. So Southeastern Championship Wrestling. I already had. Okay. Um, I was gonna open up and. It fell through at the last minute. Um, if I ever did open up again, it would be Platinum Wrestling. I'd bring that ah. back. Um, I already had ah. it going and had it had it Blame. ready, Blame. and it was just Platinum Wrestling. Platinum Wrestling. Um, just like Platinum. It. Where you going? I'm going to Platinum. That's that was what we Ooh, had yeah, going. That, so that sound kinda... you know what I mean. So that's pretty much what I would do. But as far as the question before, and I didn't really get to expand because I was just talking about the CCW shows we got lined up. But yeah. currently, right now, I am working for Championship Wrestling Entertainment as well. Okay. CW, they run out of Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce, and Vero Beach. So I'm mm -hmm. over there with them. On March 1st, I make my debut at uh, Real Pro in Fort Myers. Oh, so okay. I'll be in Fort Myers for Real Pro. New Blood Rising will be in action over there. Um, also working with South Florida Wrestling Alliance, who I've been working with for 20-something years at the Collier County Fair. Wow. Where there are three dates in March. So it's the SFWA. You can find them, SFWA Wrestling. Find them on Facebook. Um, also made my debut a couple weeks back with Ronan. Um, so I was at the Ronin How was show. That experience? It was good. It was fun. Okay. Uh, I I've, I've been wanting to get into Ronin for a while, so it was good to be able to go there and make my debut and yeah, yeah. and get my feet in the door there. And um, great locker room, great card. I mean, it was an outstanding show. They had a great response with the crowd. I mean, they're doing big things over there. So I'm glad to be a yeah. part of it. 
Okay. And um, also made my debut, as you know, this weekend with WXW. Mm-hmm. Um, work with them. I also did the CWE show, Championship Wrestling Entertainment, the night before. So I've been having a lot of shows lately. Um, so and once March hits, uh, ten booked in March and three already in April. Wow. So that's a lot of shows booked up. So on the uh, show, he is busy <laughs> and he keeps busy on social media. Facebook, talking, Facebook King over here. And yeah, talking yeah. about if you wanna uh, catch him on Facebook. Type in facebook.com backslash J Dog, spelled D A W G Brooks. Brooks. So J Dog Brooks. Hit him up. He is on. You know I mean? I'm also on Instagram. You feel me? On Instagram, it's just at J J A Y Y underscore D G A F underscore K A Y Y. So J don't give up underscore K. You know what I mean? All right, brother. Well, thank you again very much for coming to our show, man. This was very appreciate interesting. It, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing I, I forgot to mention. Um, I see this oh. uh, wrestling ring you guys set Can up right here in the front. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see the ring guys set up, and it, it reminds me of the old <laughs> days when I had my rings and I had all the action figures back in the day from yeah. Hogan and Andre the Giant and Junkyard Dog and all them back in the day. So, But I see it's all set up pretty neat with like a Royal Rumble style match going on here. Well, I got to give a <laughs> so, special shout out to Geo Master for putting this there up you go. for us. Hey, the little eye candy for us, you know, to to uh, put to in the show here. Kind of um, looks like Brock Lesnar is getting ready to uh, power bomb the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, too, yeah. I want to. I would love to see something like that happen. Yeah, we just paused it, but when we're off the show, we're going to continue this <laughs> fight over here. All right, guys. So thank you very much. This is your boy Bogey on the Few Show. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next one. Enough said, baby. Quote the product. Enough said. Rah, rah.